The number one thing people said to me after finding out I read Percy Jackson for the first time was, whatever you do, don't watch the movie. So guess what we're gonna do today? I love suffering. If you are new here, I'm Michaela. I have an unhealthy obsession with books and movies and I make fandom content. I just really want to be able to see how the movie compares to the book, but also since the new Percy Jackson series is coming on in Disney Plus later this month, I really want to be able to see how the movie compares to the series. And like I said, I, I like suffering. Apparently, that's what I've been told. Maybe it's good. I don't know. We'll see. They got Boromir for this. Oh, whoa. Boromir and the hot dad from Mamma Mia and Ahsoka Tano and Sam and Dean's brother that they left in hell. It's a pretty good cast, I gotta say. Right off the bat, <laughs> I'm already complaining. Right off the bat, I think opening with that scene between Poseidon and Zeus was just not a very good way to tell the story because in the book you're discovering everything with Percy. You're discovering he's a half-blood, you're discovering he's a son of Poseidon, you're discovering the existence of Greek gods and goddesses with him. In the movie, if we know more than Percy, we're not discovering it with him. It doesn't feel as personal and it doesn't take us on as much of a journey. I just don't think, I just don't think it's a very good way to tell a story. I was told that the characters were aged up a little bit in the movie, but um, that is a lot of age to add. That's not a 12-year-old boy. If the plan was to make five movies and you start with an 18-year-old, how old? They're gonna, it's gonna be Percy Jackson, but he's in his 20s. This is gonna, instead of dealing with school, he's gonna be like, oh god, I gotta defeat, I gotta defeat Kronos and I gotta do my taxes. It's called a dope day. It's still not a verb. Come on, back me up, verb. It's not a verb. Whoa, 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 whoa. Chris Columbus directed this. I, I, ooh, how can this movie have gone bad, though? Chris Columbus did very, very well with Harry Potter 1 and 2. Those were very faithful movie adaptations. The letter rearranging is kind of cool. That's kind of cool. So I understand that it's a movie, and you can't show all of Percy's funny and witty internal monologue, but there are other ways to show that he is funny and witty. For example, dialogue. Via distress. This is a pen. This is a pen. He can do his mother. They gave Percy some good lines. I'll give it. I'll give him that. I remember seeing that line on every single trailer for this movie and TV that was playing in 2010. And I gotta say, Logan Lerman's delivery, iconic. I, one of the best delivered lines. I I hadn't even seen the movie and I could not stop laughing at that. I think the problem is though, Percy's lines are funny. But Percy himself is not funny. The lines are funny because of the situational context. The lines aren't funny because Percy as a character is funny, and that's what's missing. Poseidon claiming Percy was a pretty big plot point, but it's, it's fine. I do like how Percy just assumes his father's Poseidon in the movies. Like, can you imagine if his father actually wasn't Poseidon? And he's like, oh, hey, my father's Poseidon. And then Chiron has to be like, no, no, your dad was a completely unimportant god. You're not, you're not that special, though. Weird assumption. But I will say, I do love Logan Lerman as Percy. Even though his characterization isn't as much like book Percy, I feel like Logan Lerman just has, I don't know how else to put it, he has main character energy. You can watch any movie with him and you can relate to him. You can put yourself in his shoes. You can feel like you're going on that journey with him. And so that's why I, he he's a good choice for Percy. They just needed to write him better. There, there's, some, there's some good chemistry going on here. I can... I'll admit it. Luke isn't hot enough. And I don't mean the actor who plays Luke isn't hot. I mean, <laughs> you're supposed to get a little duped into thinking Luke is a hero because then during the reveal at the end, you're like, oh no, I'm using your, the word I should have been using is me. Luke seems like a nice dude. I got duped. First of all, I don't think I could believe that Annabeth could be into this version of Luke when Logan Lerman is standing right next to her. But when Luke is just some dude, then at the end when it's revealed that Luke is, you know, working with Kronos, it's kind of just like, oh, okay, yeah, checks out. It's not like, Luke, I was rooting for 
for you. We I were was all rooting for you. you. We were all rooting for No, yeah. Magic scavenger hunt for the pearls was like not a thing. How do you read this book and see the fun and cool adventure they go on and then think, you know what would be more interesting? A game of hide and seek with Pearl. Persephone, girl, what are you doing here? It's summertime. I do want to say, you can make good adaptations that don't stay 100% true to plot points in the book. I think Lord of the Rings did this very well. There are many things that happen in the Lord of the Rings movies that did not happen in the book, yet overall those movies really retained the heart, the characterizations, and the essential parts of the story. So they came out as good adaptations. You don't have to include every single plot point when you're making an adaptation. You just have to stay true to the story and for some reason it seems like a very very difficult task for a lot of adaptations to do. Emotional damn it. And it's like yeah I have a lot to say about the differences between the Harry Potter books and the Harry Potter movies but overall the Harry Potter movies retained the spirit of the books and that's why they did so well. These Percy Jackson movies did not retain one ounce of the spirit of the books. One, one millimeter of the spirit of the books, you know? Because that's the thing about making an adaptation. My camera fell, my camera fell over, but I just, I wanted to say, that's the thing about making an adaptation. You don't have to remain true to every single plot point in the books. You just have to remain true to the spirit of the books. And his shield and used us. Why did they just do the loop board. reveal like that? Um, the loop reveal. Here. The Luke reveal in the book was good. It got me so hard. Luke! I'm not I'm not even gonna question why they changed it to Grover staying. At this point, I feel like I just gotta accept the fact that they they just they just saw all the book details and were like, hey, you know what would be really cool? If we did something different. I do think it's funny though that Grover was like, hey guys, look, it's okay, I'll I'll stay. I'll stay. And Percy was just immediately like, okay, talk about changes. Why is, why is he fighting Luke now instead of Aerie? You know what? I said I wasn't going to ask. I will silently judge. Why do they, I said I wasn't going to complain anymore. Why do they have the gods dressed up in Greek god clothes? The, one of the best parts of the book was when you get there into, into Olympus and it's like Poseidon is wearing his, his fisherman outfit and, and it, it, it just it completely takes away from not just the fun of the book but the, the, the whole shtick of the book, the whole everything the story has going for it, the the fun, the melding of modern day and Greek God, the, you know, all, all of this that makes Percy Jackson different and not just a standard fantasy novel based on Greek mythology, right? Put him in some fun clothes. Was it a good adaptation? No. But was it a good movie? a bad movie? So I was curious to see uh, the author Rick Riordan who I am told we call Uncle Rick because <laughs> I'm part of the fandom now. I was curious to see what his reaction to the movie is so I went on his website and he has a very strongly worded email that he had sent to the producers that he shared on his website that if you haven't read I just I need to share some of this he touches on a few minor things he likes about the script, and then he goes, Rick, having, <laughs> sorry, having said that, here's the bad news. The script as a whole is terrible. I don't simply mean that it deviates from the book, though it certainly does that to the point of being almost unrecognizable as the same story. Fans of the book will be angry and disappointed. They will, <laughs> they will leave the theater in droves and generate horrible word of mouth. That is an absolute given if the script goes forward as it stands now. But the bigger problem... <laughs> but the bigger problem is that even if you pretend the book doesn't exist, this script doesn't work as a story in its own right. Oh, I need a second. Go off, Uncle Rick! 
if I were the producer of a film and I received a letter like that from the author of a book that I was adapting, I would simply quit my job. I would not be able to continue. In the script, Luke has become a sniveling. <laughs> I can't. A sniveling little slime ball. Oh my god. He describes the dialogue as flat, tired, and uninspired. It's certainly not funny. This was followed by 12 pages of notes going through the script line by line. They did not accept my offer to rework the script. <sighs> Uncle Rick has easily become my new favorite author because... Damn. If nothing, the movie was worth it just so I could read the words of Uncle Rick roasting the shit out of it. If you liked that, please hit that subscribe button. I do, I know, I'm so sorry. I do have more reading vlog reactions to Percy Jackson coming out. I have finished the series at this point. I just have not posted them because as you can imagine, there are very, very, very long videos that I need to sort through because I decided to vlog my live reactions to reading that book. Um, so this, I will, I will. I will post them soon. And we all have the Percy Jackson series on Disney Plus to look forward to, which will hopefully be a more faithful adaptation. So if you're interested in seeing any reactions to that, let me know. I'm excited to watch that with all of you. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you for the next one. Someone take finger guns away from me.